All right, so what we're gonna do is work out a couple Punnett square uh, problems with some uh, simple um, characteristics that where there's dominance and recessive and they're just mono hybrid crosses, okay, that we're gonna see. All right, so I'm gonna kind of read an example and, and this is what we're gonna, we're gonna do here, these, these sorts of things. So uh, in this first example, we have cats have long, uh, long hair, short hair in this particular thing. And long hair says is recessive to short hair, okay? So what we're gonna do first off, when you read the problem, you say, okay, that's the first thing I read. Long hair is recessive to short hair. So um, long hair, we're gonna give the lowercase l, and then the short hair is actually gonna, we're gonna give it a, a capital L like this, because then that one's gonna be dominant, okay? So that as you read the problem, this is what you need to do. You need to take little notes like this, and if you're not given, symbols, you need to make up your own symbols. The capital letter is always going to be the dominant, the lowercase letter is going to be the recessive. If it's this one trait, okay, for a, a, a gene that has these two options, two alleles, then one's going to be dominant to the other. You need to use the same letter, like, uh, but use a letter that uh, is easy to see the difference between the uppercase and lowercase. Right. And so sometimes it will be given to you, other times uh, it will not. So in this problem then we have uh, a true breeding short hair, okay, so true breeding, remember that from our, our past example, uh, right, is going to be uh, mated with a long-haired female, okay? So the long-haired female, what's the genotype there? Well, if it's gonna be long hair, that's the recessive, right? It's gonna look like this. And then the question is going to be, what will the kittens look like? So that means for this one parent, they can only give short-haired allele. These parents can only give the long-haired allele. So this is what it would look like. They're all going to look 100% and the L is for short hair. Okay, so th that's kind of the idea. So as you read the problem, you need to make a note of um, what the symbol should be. Homozygous uh, Recessive is one that's going to be easy to know the genotype for. Uh, if you're not told that this one's true breeding, we'll, we'll see that in another example, um, where then you have to kind of figure this out, right, with the problem. Uh, and this next example says two cats are mated, one parent cat uh, is long haired or recessive. Okay, so this is a second example here. I'll use a different color just so we see it's a different example problem. So now here, one parent, so this is the parent generation, one parent generation here is like this, okay. Uh, the litter, so now we're saying, uh, results in two short-haired cats, so two with short hair. So we know that short hair has to have this, but we don't know the other uh, allele yet, okay. Um, and three long-haired. And so the long hair we know is the recessive allele. Okay, so these are the, the offspring, the kittens. What does the second parent look like and what's its genotype? So that's the question. The question is, so the second parent up here, well, we, we know one thing, right? We know that this parent has to have the allele for short hair, right? Or else you wouldn't see any short haired kittens, okay, so it has to have a, at least one allele for short hair. Now, the second question is, what is this second one? So for phenotype, so for phenotype we know it's got to be short hair. This is the long hair, okay. So we know that, but what is the genotype? So think about it like this, we break it down. Um, if we know that this one parent here can only give the recessive allele for long, and we know that this parent definitely has the um, dominant allele for short hair, what would happen, for example, if the second allele was also for short hair? If the second allele was also for short hair, what, the question is this, would we see any of these kittens with long hair? And the answer is just no, we, we wouldn't see any of those kittens um, because they would all 100% have short hair. You wouldn't see any of the uh, uh, long-haired kittens. So this is the long-haired kittens, 
short-haired kittens. So what that must mean is that in order for these kittens to exist at all, the other parent had to be able to give the allele for um, the long hair, right? So it has to be heterozygous. Hopefully that makes sense, all right? That should make sense to you. So now see here, L, 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 L. I know this isn't exact 50, 50, because there's only five individuals. If there were 500 or 1,000 individuals, which would be kind of crazy for uh, mammals to have that many offspring. But that's the idea uh, here that, you know, they're, they're pretty close to each other. And this is a roughly a 50, 50 ratio is what, what you would end up with. So in that example here, by doing a Punnett square, and knowing the basic patterns right here that we can see where each parent can only give one allele, right? If we have a certain type of offspring, we can then figure out what is the genotype even of the parents. So uh, I said in the previous lecture that for the recessive trait, it's always going to be homozygous. Or you won't see it at all, right, as a phenotype. For the dominant allele, there's more of a question of what is the genotype? What is the combination of the two alleles? Do we have a dominant and a recessive, or are they both dominant? And by looking at the patterns of the offspring, if they're both dominant, then all the offspring are going to have that characteristic 100%. If there's a mixture within the offspring, then that means the other allele has to be the recessive one, or else the there wouldn't be poss it wouldn't be possible to see the recessive um, phenotype in the offspring at all. Okay, hopefully that that makes sense here. So this is just one simple problem here, um, going one way through it, and this is another problem where we're kind of working our way backwards to kind of figure out what the parent has. And so there'd be a number of practice problems that you would do, um, and they would follow this this uh, basic pattern, um, and this is how you would solve them.